Hey folks, I'm Hugh from Carol Sausage and Country Store. Cooking is my passion. If you're looking for the best recipes from the farm to the table, then you have come to the right place. So pull up a chair and let's eat. Welcome back to the show, folks. Hey, we're back in the kitchen with my good buddy Jim Hunt down at the Fiddler's Test Kitchen down in Steenahatchee, Florida. Cooking up Jim's famous, world famous, world yeah. famous gumbo that uh, you have it available. So this is actually one of your menu items, and you do catering all over the place. And, Absolutely. So this is actually for a big catering thing you've got going on today, but it's a seafood and sausage gumbo. I guess it's seafood and Carol, Carol sausage, sausage gumbo. gumbo. Yeah, we're using Carol sausage today. I know it's going to be good. And you got the mild or the medium so sausage? I've got the medium. You're using medium sausage, medium smoked sausage in this recipe today. And uh, Jim is located down at Steenhatchee, Florida at Fiddler's Restaurant. You got Pelican Point Inn right behind the restaurant, walking distance to the lounge there. You have got a dock that you can pull your boat up to if you're in a boat and you want to come to the restaurant and eat and spend the night and get up the next morning and go. Head out of the, the river. It's just a short little drive right down the river in the boat or even down in the car. You're, you're kind of located you're about an hour and a half south of uh, Tallahassee, I guess you would say. And right. About, what, maybe an hour or so uh, west of Gainesville, somewhat in that area. But you can look it up on the map. You've got a website, Fiddler's Inn Restaurant. Fiddler'sRestaurant.com. Fiddler'sRestaurant.com. And y'all got a Facebook page? Yes, we do. Facebook, like them on Facebook, check it out. Absolutely. And you're open, I guess, pretty much every day. Every day from 4 to 10. 4 to 10. Sunday we open at 11 a.m. You got a big, I, I hear you got a killer buffet on Sunday for lunch. Well, we have a killer buffet on Friday and Saturday Friday? night. Okay. Seafood and prime rib carving station. And then on Sunday we have the country buffet. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, man, I, I've, I was able to be here back. I don't know, it was actually one weekend of, uh, several months ago when you, I guess you just started the buffet back up, and man, it was dynamite. But we're here today in, in the test kitchen. You can hear the rattling and the wind, and, the, and again, the boat's going by. We're right on the Steenahatchee River here. This is the where it all goes down. Everything that's on the menu in Fiddler's Restaurant goes through the test kitchen first. Got folks lined up sampling it. You get everybody's A-OK. -okay. A plus or, or what? If it's not an A plus, it don't even make it down to the to the menu. But I got to tell you a quick little story um, of somebody that has tested this, but I haven't heard back from her yet. Uh, my wife and I went to Paula Dean's house, ah. and we took her a um, uh, a portion, a, a quart sized portion of the uh, seafood gumbo with the sausage in it. And we're trying to get her down here to cook in the test kitchen with us. And so well, far, we, I've, all I've been able to get is you. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm sorry you had to settle for me today. <laughs> she's a lot prettier than you are. Yeah, I tell you, I, 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 oh, Paula Dean, she's a mess. I'm hoping to get on her show myself one of these. Maybe we can, we can work on her together. There you go. There guest. you go. So hopefully she'll see this show. Somebody will, somebody will let her know we were talking about That's her. That's right. I'm sure. Well, Jim, what are we going to start out with... You got several, so many things here. It looks like a lot of stuff going into a pot. So. If you'll open this can of tomatoes for me, I've already put some tomatoes in here, and I can go over the list of the ingredients that we're going to put in here. Of course, because of the time of this being on the air, um, we've prepped. I've prepped the onions and the uh, uh, green bell peppers, um, and we have some, about three pounds of your sausage. And I have a st whole stock of celery. And then we're going to add, seafood-wise, we're going to add shrimp, scallops, and this Use is... Using fresh sea trout. Baby. Sea trout that uh, the two boats caught yesterday. Yep. We were out on the water yesterday, folks, and, I mean, we had a blast. We were out... Uh, her tanning bed charters right here in Steenahatchee took us out. We caught trout. We caught redfish. We caught, uh, we caught sea bass. Uh, gosh, we caught something. Else. What else are we missing here? I was caught some blue fish, and we just had a blast. And there's nothing like going down and catching. Y'all had fresh a few fish. Uh, Spanish mackerel. Spanish too. mackerel. That's right. That's one I was leaving out. The Spanish. I actually caught a 
couple of really nice Spanish micro yesterday. Right. They were running. It was so much. We, we, we got our limit. It was a good good day. I mean, it was an awesome day. So I've had a couple of people lately bring in a, a king mackerel. Oh, and, yeah. You know, they fight. They're, our, they're great. Our Captain Don was telling us yesterday that he'd caught a nice king mackerel out there not, not too long ago. So that's good. Yeah, it was good eating, too. Well, basically on this gumbo, the first part of it is the tomatoes that are diced and everything that we've put in here already. Now we're going to add all these portions here and basically put it all in a big pot and put it on the stove and let it cook. We're going to put the seafood back in the refrigerator for a little while because we don't want it to cook in the pot right now. Um, because the longer you cook the seafood, it makes it tough. So this is kind of like a low country bowl to an extent. You cook the veggies and get all that done, and then you add your seafood. Absolutely. Your, salt, your shrimp last and your seafood. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the last thing I use is I put some cut okra in there. Uh, you've got to have some cut okra in there to make it so Give it that. real Cajun. There you go. So what do we add in I'm here? I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, diced bell peppers, which is about, for this size pot, I've used five bell peppers. I've used five jumbo sweet onions, Vidalia onions. Vidalia onions, they were good. And we're going to use some of this great Carol sausage right here. You just kind of cut those in about half inch slices maybe. Right. Well, I like to not get it too thin because if you get it too thin, I don't want it to fall apart. Yeah, I want it to, try to cook you know, apart, keep it so when you get a bite of it, you get a good, good bite of sausage. There you go. And we'll add this celery. Like four or five stalks of celery chopped up, I guess. Is that about right? Actually, it's the whole stalk. Oh, whole stalk. Okay. For this big of a pot. Yeah. Now then, I've got some bay leaves I'm going to add to it. Three or four bay leaves. And Mint fresh garlic. garlic. It's a large pot. You need a large amount four of Four or five. That's probably about a half a cup or so, give or take, I guess. And then I always put a little bit of cayenne pepper in here. Because that gives it a little bit of that Cajun kick. Gumbo's got to have a little bit of a kick. And now we're ready to go to the stove with it. I'm going to pour it and give it a little bit of liquid. Oh, I can't wait to try this. And we're going it's to go to the stove good. and get it started cooking. All right, well, hey, I'll tell you what. Let's take a quick little break. Y'all don't go anywhere. We're going to get this going. We'll be back. We've got to let this cook for a few minutes or so. Well, several minutes, actually, to get it really get the flavors going together. Right. And then we'll add the seafood here. Maybe when we get back from the commercial break. Y'all don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Go to the stove. Oh, boy, that's a pot of stuff, ain't it? Oh, yeah. Our day always starts early, making sure everything gets done. And every day, Conger LP Gas helps. Life's better with propane. It's reliable, clean, and American-made. A full house with our busy schedule and what seems to be never-ending laundry. Having enough hot water is important, because at the end of the day, there's always enough hot water for me. Hunger LP Gas, fueling your life every day. The freshest meats from the farm to your table. You know it's good when you see that Carol's label. Sausage just like Grandpa used to make. Mouth water and ribs, chops, bacon, and steak. Your family's gonna love it, so do yourself a favor. Carol Sausage and Meats, your choice for mealtime flavor. The Georgia Grown logo is a symbol of quality throughout our nation. Georgia is nature's favorite state, where agriculture is the number one business. Learn about agro-tourism, explore unique farming venues, and see where your food comes from on the Georgia Grown Trails. In season, you can purchase fresh Georgia produce and other fine Georgia-grown products. Help grow Georgia's economy and support your neighbors by purchasing products with the Georgia-grown logo. 
Goods of Pecans is your family-owned source known for growing pecans with exceptional taste and quality. Now introducing a variety of all-natural pecan butters alongside their toasted gourmet treats. Taste for yourself their flavors of cinnamon, sugar, sea salt, and brand new sriracha. Don't forget to put pecan butter on your shopping list this season. And remember to shop Georgia Grown. Visit GoodsOfPecans.com to learn more about the products, view recipes, and to purchase pecans and pecan butter for your family. Okay, now I'm adding some roux. I've made this roux, and um, right here at the tail end, I go ahead and, and thicken it before I put the seafood in. As you can see, it's really hot. But after I thicken it, get it to the consistency that I want, then we'll add the seafood, because we don't want the seafood to be tough. When I'm making my roux, I use flour and butter. And if you've ever made roux before, it can be a real pain because you've got to be careful and not scorch it. So you want it to be kind of a brown color as you can see that it is from actually cooking the butter and the flour. It gives it a great flavor. Now we're going to put the seafood in. That's the fish. It takes the longest to cook. So I put it in there. Then next I add the shrimp. Too, huh? Yep. And I need to add a few scallops to it. Do you think I've got that recipe down just right for this pot? <laughs> I think so. I don't believe you can squeeze another bell pepper in there, can you? No, but I might could get two more shrimp in. Now we let it just sit and simmer just a little bit. Have you heard about the great Georgia-grown oils and flowers made by Oliver Farm in Pitts, Georgia? This family-owned and operated business are pioneers in the field and are proud to offer you freshly pressed, straight-off-the-farm cooking oils. Use them like you would any other oil. Great for marinades, dressings, sautéing, frying, and grilling. Check out our webpage, oliverfarm.com, and see what we have to offer. Then pick up a bottle at Carol's for your next cooking adventure. Wind down your weekday at Gin Creek Vineyards. Step inside the old pack house to sample any of our 13 wines. Can't get to Gin Creek? 
Gin Creek wines are now available at your local package store, making it even more convenient for you to relax and enjoy your weekday wind down with a sip of history from Gin Creek Vineyards. The freshest meats from the farm to your table. You know it's good when you see that Carol's label. Sausage just like Grandpa used to make. Mouth water and ribs, chops, bacon, and steak. Your family's gonna love it. So do yourself a favor. Carol Sausage and Meats, your choice for mealtime flavor. The Georgia Grown logo is a symbol of quality throughout our nation. Georgia is nature's favorite state, where agriculture is the number one business. Learn about agro-tourism, explore unique farming venues, and see where your food comes from on the Georgia-grown trails. In season, you can purchase fresh Georgia produce and other fine Georgia-grown products. Help grow Georgia's economy and support your neighbors by purchasing products with the Georgia-grown logo. All right, welcome back, folks. Back down in the kitchen with Jim Hunt, Fiddler's Restaurant, Pelican Point Inn, right here in Steena Hatchie, Florida. We're going to do one of my favorite recipes, and I'm going, to I'm going to share this with you real quick before we get started. I called a couple of days ago to get a hold of Jim, and I called him on his cell phone. I don't know, he was out doing something in the yard, or I don't know what he was doing. He sounded like he was working or pushing the lawnmower, maybe. I don't know. He stays busy all the time. And... He, he answers the phone and I said, hey, Jim, it's you. And I said, uh, we're planning to come down. And before I could say anything else, he says, well, bring me some smoked pork chops. I mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't even, he didn't even ask what we were doing or what, why we were coming. He just says, bring me some smoked pork chops right away. And I said, okay. So anyway, I said, well, I'll tell you what, while we're down there, I'm going to come to the kitchen and I'm going to show you a couple of things on how to cook these. Because I know you love them and you were telling me how you cook yours and, and uh, you'd like to cook them in a skillet and just kind of saute them a little bit. But I like to do mine with salsa and basically on the grill. So that's kind of what we're going to do here today. But Jim owns Fiddler's Restaurant and then Pelican Point Inn right here in Stina Hatchie. Great place to come down and stay. We've been here for a couple of days uh, now and we've had a good time. We got to get out and do a little fishing, enjoy some scenery. And I tell you, the ducks are really down here this year and the pelicans are out on the water. Saw a couple of manatees in and out of the river and, and caught some fish. Caught some fish, and we've had a great time down here. I tell you, what a beautiful place to come. And uh, so, we're in your test kitchen for Fiddler's Test Kitchen. It all goes down right here. Uh, before it goes on the menu, it goes down here, and then it goes down to the restaurant on the menu. So, there you uh, go. well, Jim, again, I appreciate you having us down, and, and I'm excited to show you these, uh, this pork chop recipe. Matter of fact, I even brought you a little something to kind of help you out. I know you cook a lot. But uh, I brought a little gift down to you to take a look at. It's my cookbook. Matter of fact, I even put my John Henry in there and wrote you a little note. So wow, I got thanks. you an autographed copy of Cooking with Hugh. And these are available at Carol Sausage and Country Store in Ashman and Sylvester. And if you call us, we can ship one to you. Got a lot of great recipes in here. This is yours. I'm, I've got a smoked chop salsa recipe on page 124, just in case you need it after we get done here today to refresh your memory on that. So. Do I need to look it up for you? Yeah, you may want to take a look at it so I can remember sure? how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank hey, you. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, man. So uh, actually the recipe that we're going to cook here today with our using our Carol smoked pork chops is a little bit different than what's in the book. So that tells you, you can change it. And I know you, when you get in there and start digging through those recipes, you'll probably call me late at, late at night saying, hey, you need to do this or do that, or you put too much of this in there or whatever. I can already, <laughs> I can already tell you. I know you're going to kind of tweak it a little bit, but that'll be I'm good. Sure so it'll you, be good. If you see anything in there that needs, needs improvement on my, before I do my next cookbook, feel free to let me know. Um, all right, well, this, this is pretty simple and easy recipe right here. Jim, we're just going to throw in some. I got a can of chopped tomatoes and I like to use the one that's already got the uh, bell pepper and onions in it you can add fresh bell pepper and onion to this if you want to I'm gonna put we're using a little just just, just a little uh, skillet because we're going to saute this off and then we're going to grill our chops this is a peach pineapple jam we've got this available at Carol's there's a lot of different flavors and different kinds you can use for this recipe you can use a jalapeno I started bringing a jalapeno but I was like eh, I don't know I want to get it too spicy but if you want it spicy, you can get a jalapeno jam or jelly. 
This is a pineapple, peach pineapple. I'm gonna use about a half a jar, I guess. You just want enough in there to kind of give it a little good, some good flavor. Here, I want to get a little try of it. Yeah, there you go. This is good on biscuits and toast for breakfast and using it in some different kind of recipes. That's delicious. Isn't that good? Old family recipe, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's right, yep. Use a little bit of lemon juice in here. We're gonna put about a half, about not a half a cup, maybe a quarter of a cup lemon juice. Kind of, there we go. And I'm gonna use some, uh, this is a Georgia grown product, boot liquor hot sauce that we carry at Carol's. This was actually a um, product contested in the 2017 flavor of Georgia. We're gonna use about a quarter of a cup, give or take. Then we're gonna put a little bit of my garlic butter seasoning in here. I and tasted this is, that, that's this, great. This is a good seasoning right here. All right, just sprinkle a little bit of that on top. Really no need mixing this up till you kind of start heating it up because that the jelly needs to kind of saute. So we're gonna go over to the, top it off over here on your stove top real All quick. All right. If you want to bring those chops with you, I'll let you. All uh, right, we'll head to the grill. You got the grill hot. So we'll throw, we're gonna grill those off on both sides. We'll simmer this a little bit and then that's it. A simple, quick, easy recipe. All right, folks, we got this on the oven kind of on a medium heat. I'm just gonna bring that to a slow simmer. We'll give that just a few minutes to heat up there and it'll blend in real good. Jim, you getting about ready to throw those chops on over there? Yes, sir. I want you to know he wasn't kidding how much I really like these pork chops. In fact, I'm gonna figure out a way we can have these in the restaurant. These are absolutely the best smoked pork chops I've ever had in my life. We're just gonna sear them a little bit, and we'll turn them, and they'll be ready. You just wanna flip these over. Let them, you just wanna sear these on both sides, so we'll just flip them over after, you know, maybe four or five minutes on each side on a good hot grill, and they're ready to go. Okay, folks, you just wanna bring this salsa to a bowl, kind of a slow simmer. And uh, we just, you know, what I'll do, once it starts simmering really good, I'll just turn that heat down on low and, you know, simmer it for five or 10 minutes and then we'll take it off the heat, let it just sit and chill for four or five minutes and it'll thicken up a little bit here in a minute. You just want to kind of get it to, once it start, begins to cook, you want to cook some of, the, some of the water out of it, the juices out, just to kind of get it uh, where it's going to be a little bit thicker and because we're going to pour this right over the chops. Jim, I tell you what, buddy, you're doing a great job of grilling those smoked chops. I think you've done that before. Twice. Twice? Okay. <laughs> Is this the second time yep. you've done it? Oh, second good, time. Good job. I'll tell you what. Hey, right, look at the salsa. That's Ooh. looking great. Mm. Isn't that looking good? It's looking See, great. See, think just cook it down, you know, till you get it to the consistency that you want. A little bit thick, not too runny, not too thick, but just, you know, you want to get it just right. I like to go ahead, and you can do this a couple of different ways. Some people like salsa on their chops, and some don't like salsa on their chops. So you can, you know, if you want to put it over the chops, you can. If not, I'm going to go ahead and put some over these. It's just kind of get, so you'll see what the, the final product is supposed to look like. I'm just going to kind of cover these up. You can garnish this with a little, you know, slice of lemon if you want. A little lemon, slice of lemon. Squeeze a little lemon over the chop once it's cooked. It's good on a smoked pork chop too. Or, you know, throw a fresh slice of pineapple on the side. There we go. Put it on a, you know, I like using a bed of white rice or even wild rice. You can lay those chops on, a, you know, if you want to just, just make up a dish and throw some fresh green beans with that or whatever, and you're good to go. If you want to have a, you want to try one of these out and see what you that think. That looks fabulous. Doesn't that look good? You want to taste the, hey, we can taste it. Put it over here on the plate. I 
Oh yeah, look at that. I can tell how tough it is. Oh yeah, it's, it's, I tell you what, melt in your mouth. Try that out, see what you think there, Jim. Mm, mm, mm. Not bad, huh? Mm. You know, you might should open a restaurant. Mm. You know, you're not the first person that's told me that. Jim, I tell you what, man, that's some good looking gumbo right here. Well, I hope it tastes Ooh. as good as it looks. I tell you, I tell does. you what, <clears throat> you're gonna try what I made for you, and I'm gonna continue eating what you made for me. <laughs> that sounds good. Had these nice scallops in here, and the shrimp, fresh shrimp. That fresh uh, saltwater trout we caught yesterday. Hmm. Hmm. It tastes better than it smells. It tastes better than it looks. It's good. Good mm. deal. And folks, so is this smoked mm -hmm. smoke, smoke pork, pork chop. chop. Hey, you got this on the menu at the restaurant. Absolutely. Y'all check it out. You get, I guess you, you serve this over rice. Is that kind of generally how you do that down at the mm -hmm. restaurant? You can get it both ways. You can get a bowl with just the gumbo or you can get a dinner with the rice and mm. the... Oh, that's good. Scallops are so good. Well, folks, I tell you what, it's been good, it's been fun. Any any day in the kitchen is a good day. Absolutely. Jim, I appreciate it. Thank you, we've had Thank a great you. day. Man, it's been good. We need to do it again. We'll do it. I'm gonna come up and uh, eat at your restaurant tonight. What you cooking? Good deal. Something good? I'm a, Absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right, folks, y'all don't go anywhere. Thank y'all for tuning in. This is Business Spotlight. It's been 30 years since all of this started, and boy, have they grown. They being Carol Sausage and Meat Company, and Hugh Hardy is the CEO, and you oversee everything, and you check behind your people and as far as the meats and everything. But I want to do a little walk back in time, if we can, with history. How did all this start for you? Well, I, I purchased the company back in 2001, and um, we have just taken it. It started off in Sycamore, Georgia, and we've yeah. taken it since then, and we have just grown and uh, to you know, this huge store right here on Interstate 75 in Ashburn, mm -hmm. um, and also our store there in Sylvester, Georgia, yes. right on Highway 82. We built our business based on good quality products mm -hmm. and and most of all, customer service. Our, our employees, uh, you know, they love our customers, they love waiting on people, and you know, mm -hmm. so that's, that's yeah. you know, those all those things combined has helped us to grow and, Expand. Yeah. You know, and people come because you started out as focusing on meats. Of course, you've got thousands of products in this main store where we are today in Ashburn. But your meat counter, people are just amazed. They'll go, they'll walk from one end where the beef is all the way all to the way other to end to the sausage. Yeah. But your type of meats that you pick and choose, if you will, and your recipes, that's what separates you from a lot of the other guys in the business, right? Yep, exactly. We make a lot of our products right here in house. All of our sausages are made right here. We make couple two or three different kinds mm -hmm. of bacons we have uh, we do our own stuffed jalapenos and our stuffed mushrooms we make about 50 varieties of sausage yeah. anywhere from mild to hot to jalapeno and cheese yeah, about five day yeah. onion and cheese was our flavor of Georgia winter in 2017 and uh, medium smoke hit the People's Choice Award in yeah. 2016 so okay. a lot of good stuff yeah that was then this is now yeah that's right yeah. plan to spend a couple hours in here bring oh, your yeah. cooler definitely okay. bring a big right. cooler thanks you